Today on Passion for Food, we'll be making my favorite tater tots recipe. These classic little crispy potato bites are awesome. Along with mixing up three dipping sauces, they're quick, delicious, and are actually really simple to make. So let's go ahead and get started here and I'll show you how to make these tater tots at home. And the star of our show is a pound and a half of these russet potatoes. So we'll just go ahead and give those a quick peel. And then we'll just give these a rough slice and it doesn't really matter so much what the final size is just so long as we keep that final size fairly consistent. Otherwise, we risk winding up with some pieces that are perfectly cooked and some that are just mush. So we definitely want to keep our eyes peeled for that. But once we have our potatoes, we'll go ahead and dump those into a pot of boiling water. And we just want to simmer these for about 10 minutes or so. But the time is going to depend on the size we cut our potatoes. And the most critical thing here is that we check these often and we don't overcook them. You want them to be kind of firm when you stick a knife in like that. You don't want these to be soft like you were going to make mashed potatoes. These are not mashed potato bites. These are tater tots. You want to be able to push a knife in, but you should definitely feel some firm resistance. So let's get ready to drain these. But before we do, I'm actually going to cool these down. And the way I'm going to do that is by pouring out most of the hot water, and then we're going to pour in cold water. This accomplishes a couple of things. It stops our perfectly cooked potatoes from overcooking, and it also cools them down nice and quickly so we don't have to wait for an hour before we can actually handle these. We will normally have to fill the pot up like that to absorb most of the residual heat, dump out that now warm water, and fill it up with some more nice cool water. And after just letting this sit for only a minute or two, these will be cool enough for us to handle. At which point we can go ahead and drain these, and I do like to let these uh, drip for just a minute or so. No need to be too aggressive though, I've seen some really crazy stuff out there. People drying the potatoes with towels, people trying to squeeze the potatoes like they're sponges. No need for any of that, just relax you guys. Anyway, let's transfer these to a nice big mixing bowl. And we're going to add about a quarter of a cup of cornstarch. I see a lot of people using flour, which works okay, but I think with cornstarch you get not only a better crunch, but a longer lasting crunch. And the only other thing I'm going to add here is about a teaspoon or so of salt. And we don't want to so much mash these as just kind of break them apart with our fingers. Not that fried mashed potatoes aren't nice, but they're not tater tots, and we're making tater tots here today. You want to have kind of a coarse looking mix like this, but it should easily clump together like that. Now that would be one big tater tot. But before we get totten, let's peel on over here for a moment and get our oil ready. I really like a wok for this because the shape allows me to use a minimal amount of oil. And I'm going to be using about two cups of canola oil here, but any neutral tasting oil of your choice will work. And we'll just let our oil start to preheat over medium high while we start forming our tots. A bowl of water like this will help keep it from sticking to our hands. And I've also heard that slightly hydrating the exterior of the tot makes them slightly crispier. I'm not completely sure if that's true, but the hand thing definitely is. Anyway, this is about the amount of mixture you want. Approximately a teaspoon per tot. And we don't have to do much here. We just want to press these together into smooth little balls. You do want to form kind of a skin on the outside. There shouldn't be any breaks there. If ever it seems a little too dry, just dip your hands into the water. Now, I don't know if you can see it well on camera, but you see these chunks of whole potato in there? That's the key to the perfect tot goodness. That's why we didn't grate our potatoes or overcook them or mash them. In your final tot, you want those little chunks of potato in there. And you might be asking why we didn't put any, you know, fancy herbs or spices and cheeses and stuff into our mix. Well, really the reason is because uh, all of those things would just completely take over the tot. These are tater tots, not, you know, fried cheese potato bites. Call me a tot purist if you will, but I really feel like the place for that stuff is on top of the tots, not in the tots. I hope that doesn't agitator anyone. Hey, you do you. Anyway, let's get on the ball here and get the rest of these done. 
One of these little uh, mesh spiders really helps a lot with dumping these in, but you can just drop them in two or three at a time as well. That works just fine. One of the nice things about our tater mix here is that it's nice and dry, so we don't really have to worry about these sticking together too much. So let's check on our oil real quick. And one way we can do that is just by dipping in a tot and seeing if it sizzles. If not, it's not hot enough yet. An instant read thermometer is also a great tool for this. We're looking for at least 325 or so before we want to drop these tots. So we'll go ahead and grab them and you just want to kind of scoot them gently into the oil. Don't drop them from way up high. Get them right down in there. So while that's frying along happily for us, let's go ahead and take five minutes to make three quick dipping sauces. We're going to be making sour cream and onion, honey mustard, and spicy chili garlic fry sauce. For the garlic chili fry sauce, we want two tablespoons of mayo along with one tablespoon of ketchup. That's the standard fry sauce base. And then to that, we're going to add one half to one quarter teaspoon of this garlic chili sauce. You'll normally find that next to the rooster sauce in the grocery store. And for our honey mustard sauce, we want two tablespoons of mayo along with two tablespoons of mustard and two tablespoons of honey so that's equal parts of each nice and easy to remember and for our sour cream and onion dip we want about a third of a cup of green onions and to pull out some moisture we're going to go ahead and salt that one first with about a half a teaspoon or so of salt and we'll go ahead and add a quarter teaspoon to our honey mustard and just a little bit of black pepper to taste and we want just a splash of vinegar in the honey mustard and the spicy fry sauce. And before we get things all mixed up here, one way that I found uh, that helps release a lot more flavor from these green onions is after you salt them, you want to kind of mash them around a little bit with a spoon. That will help that salt release more moisture and that oniony goodness will help flavor our sour cream. You can see it looks darker and a little wet now. That's exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and get our spicy fry sauce mixed up. And then on to our honey mustard sauce. And finally we'll add a couple of tablespoons of sour cream to our now seasoned and mashed green onions. And get all that mixed up. And because we pre-mashed those green onions, that's ready to use immediately. It can be a good idea to give these a quick taste for seasoning, but mine were perfect. So let's go ahead and set these aside and finish frying our tots. And after frying for about five minutes or so, they should be nice and golden brown like this. So we'll go ahead and fish these out and we do want to season these immediately. Which you can't actually see because my salt cellar was just off camera. Whoops. Well, okay. We'll just move these off onto a cooling rack. And while you could totally cover that potato mixture and stick it in the fridge for a couple of days to fry in batches, I would actually suggest that you fry all of your tots at once. I mean, the oil's hot, the kitchen is a mess, might as well get it over with, right? Plus, you can always freeze your leftover tots and use them later. In fact, this is a great way to use up a bunch of potatoes you have that might be getting a little older. Anyway, let's grab a bowl of these and give them a try. This really is my favorite tater tots recipe, and it just couldn't be simpler to make from home. They have a wonderfully crispy, crunchy exterior and a soft interior with those wonderful little chunks of potato. So let's give one a try here with some of that honey mustard. And the cool thing about how crispy these are is that they'll stay completely crispy even as they cool down to room temperature. Which is also a big bonus if we wind up freezing these because all we have to do is bake them at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes and they'll be like they just came out of the fryer. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so you don't miss our weekly episodes. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the link in the description for the new Passion for Food t-shirt store, where we will be featuring t-shirts based on our weekly Passion for Food pun comics. 
And I can tell you, I've been making so many potato jokes with my wife this week that it really started to irritate her. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well out there, and this has been Graham with Passion for Food.